everyone and welcome back to crochet tutorials in this video I'm very excited because we are going to make this adorable little fellow he's a ghost obviously I'm sure you can tell that um, he is made using amigurumi techniques um, in continuous rounds that's his bottom end and as you can see he sits nicely he's got this little frilly skirt um, some eyes, some funky little eyebrows, and a mouth. So he's really easy to make. For this little critter, we're going to need a few things. So obviously a yarn and a hook, embroidery cotton to do his face. We've got some eyes. For this one, I actually used these really small eyes, and I think they're about 3 mil. But I'm going to actually upsize and go for a bigger eye this time um, and of course the backs of the eyes you can buy these eyes in packs like these this is actually a pack of eyes and noses Look, a cute little nose um, <laughs> it's black noses pink noses red noses brown noses more black noses um, I think these black noses have got nostrils um, and eyes of various sizes you can buy those on eBay and probably Amazon and whatever else you online shopping you do. Um, we're going to need a pair of scissors, clearly um, a needle to, darning needle to darn in your ends. This one is what I use for the embroidery. It's got a much sharper point and it's metal so it's a lot easier and it's not as thick obviously as this one so it can get through and make some finer adjustments to the face some fiber fill and all important in amigurumi a stitch marker if you don't have a stitch marker you can use a paper clip or a safety pin or anything that can get you through that stitch okay we're ready to go oh actually i should mention the yarn the yarn i'm using is a worsted weight yarn it's um i've, I've actually thrown out the label long ago um, but it is a beautiful soft yarn it's a acrylic nylon rayon and angora blend it is worsted weight but it's not quite as as thick as a 10 ply it's probably about as thick as an 8 ply um, having said that if you do use an 8 ply just plain acrylic you may get a smaller fellow than this um, if you use a thicker yarn um, you know a, a heavy worsted weight yarn then you are going to get a bigger guy um, but Whatever yarn you use, if you follow the instructions, you'll come up with this little ghost. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is make a magic circle. If you don't know how to make one of those, just lay the tail of the yarn over your hand. Wrap it around the front, give it a bit of a tail, wrap it around the front of those three fingers and bring it up and across that first wrap. And grab your hook, go in under that first wrap, grab the working end and pull it up, then grab the working end again and completely fail to pull it through the loop. Then try again. So grab that yarn, grab the other yarn and pull it through the loop and that is a completely solid magic ring it's not going to undo when I dangle it so we'll put that back on the hook and just shut that ring a tiny bit and then we need to single crochet actually we're going to chain one and then we're going to single crochet six single crochets into that ring onto that final stitch and just pull on the tail end and close that ring I may just zoom in a little bit for you oh not that far that's probably better okay then we are going to increase 
in every stitch so I always like to count my stitches one two three four five six beautiful it has the added bonus of knowing that oh yeah that's the turning chain there and that's actually my first stitch so increase into every stitch means we put a single crochet two times in every stitch and after I've done my second stitch I put my stitch marker in so I just count back one two stitches put that stitch marker in and then I'm free to just put two stitches into every stitch so the whole thing is made in single crochet in UK terminology that is double crochet but in the US terminology it's single crochet it means you pull two loops up on your hook yarn over and pull through once uh, did I put two in there or one one That's what happens when you get distracted right at the beginning too so easily distracted okay so this should be my 11th and 12th stitch I'll just go back and count to save headaches later one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve beautiful then we are going to increase to 18 and that means that we will put a stitch in the first stitch and two in the second so one in one stitch and then two in the next put my stitch marker in count back three that's my first stitch so it goes in there and then I can just put one stitch and two in the following and I tend to just count to three and know that two and three both have to go into the same stitch two, three. One. Two. Three. course you can count up to 18 um, but you know then you have to remember which stitches you increase on and I find it a lot easier this way and then get away stitch marker and then just going back and counting one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen lovely now in the next round we're going to increase to 24 which means we will increase every third stitch so we'll put a stitch in and then a single crochet in the next stitch and then two in this one now I've just done four So I've put the stitch marker in my fourth stitch back, which I know is my first stitch. And then again, just increase that way. So now I know that three and four are the stitches that share a space.
Now generally, you know, if you're one stitch off, if you've got one stitch too many, that isn't going to make an enormous deal because for the next five rounds, we are just going to crochet a single crochet in every stitch around. So we still need our stitch marker though. him back and what the crocheting the single crochets around now is going to do is we've just done all of these rows and now it's going to flatten out or not flatten out but make a tube rather than continuing to grow as a circle so one stitch in every stitch and we should have 24 I'm going to trust my stitch marker and not count. I can count at the end of the round if I really feel the need to. But it is this is the shape of his body now. Now if you really if you wanted a bigger one you could keep increasing and in that case all I've done is increase in increments of 6. So every uh, for the next round, if you wanted to increase, then you would increase every fourth stitch instead of every third, as we just did. But I think that this little fellow is cute the size he is, so that's what we're going to do with him. And I should actually mention that even my teenage daughter said that he was adorable so you know if you've got teenagers you know how hard it is to impress them so <clears throat> little ghosty here did the job which is you know obviously I almost fell on the floor but stranger things have happened I suppose okay so this is round five round six seven eight and nine are exactly the same and what I will do is crochet those, leave you to crochet those, and I will join you back at the end of round nine. So we've just done round five. You need to do six, seven, eight, and nine. So four more rounds of a single crochet in every stitch, and I'll join you back at the end of that. Okay, so we are here at the end of row 9, and you should have something that looks like this. Just take this hook out and pop your tail in, because it can go away. As long as your hole's closed, you don't need that tail anymore. And what we're going to do is put the eyes in between round 7 and round 8. So that's where I put these in, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to actually be putting in bigger eyes. Whatever size eyes you choose is entirely up to you, whatever you've got on hand. And if you don't have any of these safety eyes, then googly eyes, <laughs> um, embroidered eyes, I'm just not terribly good at embroidery. Um, uh, this is probably the best job I have ever done, and as you can see, my ghost ended up with quite bushy eyebrows. So it um, doesn't really matter where you put it, uh, put the eyes. So we'll just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to go into this round here. Um, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why have I got ten rounds? Um, good mystery really matter does it um it's all the same size body so we're going to go into this yeah this one here and just pop the pick a stitch and pop that eye through um goes through fairly easily what i did with this one is i left three stitches you can see there i left three stitches between the eyes 
Um, so given that this one's got bigger eyes, what if I leave three stitches again, what will that look like? And you know, the placement of these, oh, doesn't that look precious? The placement of these things is entirely up to you. It's your piece. Um, now, popping the back over safety eyes, um, you pop it so the, this is really difficult to show you, so it is not with the hump side up, it is, or well, actually the hump side faces into the, the hump side faces into the actual amigurumi, so the, the cup cups over the eye at the front and holds it there nicely. Some of them are easy to pop on, some of them are absolutely diabolical and you spend ages trying to get it through, but these ones have been good to me. So eyes are in. And then we're going to do another four rounds. So exactly the same thing for another four rounds to get down the rest of his body. So again, it is just single crocheting around that whole piece. One stitch in every stitch. So I will again leave you to do that and I will join you back when we get back to that stitch marker, which is over here, in four rounds. Okay, so at the end of round 13, your little ghost should look like this, um, with his eyes already in and his body done. Now at this stage, all we're going to do is tie this off because we've completed his body and we need to, you don't actually really need that longer tail, so if you cut a shorter tail than that, that's perfectly fine. What we're going to need to do is crochet this piece now this bottom piece that makes him stand up all nicely like that. Actually, it's funny, while I was doing these rounds off camera, I was thinking, oh, it'd be nice to crochet one that's slightly taller than the one I've already got because they could, they don't have to be exactly the same. They can be different characters. And then miraculously, I had just somehow done more rounds than I had calculated. So, Perhaps if I put that same energy into winning the lottery, that'll happen for me as well. All right, so for the bottom, what we need is another magic ring. Essentially, we're going to repeat rounds one to four for to create this bottom. So we're going to repeat all the rounds that we did prior to doing the 24 single crochets around. So just the increase rounds, just these ones, not any of those. So again, we're going to chain one. We're going to put six single crochets. Not like that, we're not. All right, hang on. If you've got your ring all done and you just didn't wreck it like I did, put six single crochets into that magic ring. And I'll get there in just a second. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Then we pull on the tail again to shut it and Again, I'm just going to count my stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then increase into every stitch. So two stitches into every stitch. Oh, you've still got my stitch marker, mister. Come over here. Didn't mean to knock you around, guys. Sorry. Um, all right. So one single, sorry, two single crochets into every stitch around. And 
And what I like to do at the end of all of these increase rounds is just count my stitches just to be sure that I've got the right number because it's pretty important that you do have the right number um, while you're increasing. Once you've finished increasing, it's pretty okay, but um, while you're increasing, because of the, the way you just want it to increase evenly around, if you're putting all your increases on one side, you'd get an oval, um, and you don't want that with this piece. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Beautiful. Then we are going to single crochet into the first stitch and put two single crochets into the next. And that is single crocheting every second stitch. I mean, increasing every second stitch. So one, two, three. And one, two, three. And one. Final two stitches, one in there, and two in there. Okay, close up. All right. Now for this final increase round, it is, it's a big hole, isn't it? It is increase every third stitch. So single crochet in one stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and then two single crochets in the following stitch. Put the stitch marker in and one, two, and three, four go in the same stitch. Just the same as we did when we started the ghost. One, Three and four. I just realised I didn't turn my light on. Is that better? Two. So that is the base and it will fit over there nicely. So we can take the stitch marker out and we're not going to tie this off. We're going to, what we're going to do is join it directly. It doesn't matter where you start to join, you can join, but I tend to join right at the tail. But what we need to do is just a little bit tricky initially. I'll just zoom in a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the next stitch with both loops. And then we're going to try and get that tail in there. Um, we, then we're going to, forget it Mr. Tail then, just go in to one, the back loop of this last stitch that we made on the body here just the back loop 
and then yarn over, pull through and just slip stitch it. And the reason we're going into just that back loop is because of this frill. This frill is actually attached into the front loops of those same stitches. So then we're going to go into the next stitch and find our next stitch on here, which is this one. And go into the back loop only and slip stitch. And then we're going to do this all the way around and it can be a little bit fiddly but it should be fairly easy the actual fiddly bit will come when we're trying to find those front loops um, but there's ways that you can do that a little bit easier um, right. so just slip stitching it every time and that back loop I hope that wasn't off camera then. I have a tendency to do that with amigurumi simply because I pull it towards myself. Find the back loop only and slip stitch. So we're going to do that in every stitch until this little lid is over or halfway around actually because we need still to put in the fibre fill so into the next stitch completely back loop only of the one on the body slip stitch into the next stitch completely back loop only oh, back loop only of the one on the body pull through and pull through stitch completely Back loop only, pull through and pull through. Sometimes it's really easy to pick up that back loop only. Other times you're a little bit more reluctant, but you'll figure it out. And it's actually um, commonly used in amigurumi when you have to sew on or create something like a frill or on a skirt, or in this case, the bottom of a ghost. Um, and it's, it's a really good technique because it enables you to not have to actually sew something on, which, you know, with, with amigurumi, you're sewing enough pieces together. You don't need another thing to have to do. All right, so I'm just going to zoom out a bit. This is ready for stuffing. We've got a little hole there. Put all the tails in. They can go away. We no longer need those. And bring in that fibre fill. So it, it will take a fair bit. I wouldn't recommend overstuffing it. Um, but stuff it as firmly as you like. If you put too little in, you'll know about it. And if you put too much in, you'll know about it. Um, it just is really up to you. Um, you know, certainly you need to kind of push it around to pack it in, um, but yeah, this should be heaps. You don't want them over full. Um, if I do pack that in too full, what will happen is this bottom will lump up and then he'll just fall over. Like that, which I had to force him to do because he's not over full, which is great. Um, so, all right, so... Since we're happy with the amount of stuffing that's in there, just continuing with this closing. That is the stitch I want, isn't it? Just continuing with this closing of this base. So in through the stitch, back loop only in the stitch on the body. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and slip stitch. Really can't be easier than that. Um, well, I suppose it could be. No, it can't be. Um, and by the time it will create this little ridge when you finish, so 
that is absolutely fine it's absolutely normal we're going to have those front loops to do the little skirt in and I'll show you how to do those you'll watch me struggle with it because it can be pretty tricky especially to pick up the first one for some reason the first one seems to be quite diabolical and but the other ones seem to just fall in line once you've got the first one I've got a couple more stitches to go here and back loop only See that stitch? Oh, there's my back loop there. Yeah, that's better. And I see how tricky that is to find. But it's there, so persevere and find it. There we go. So that is coming. I don't know. Maybe that could be a boy ghost if you didn't want to do the frill. Um, not that this is a girl ghost, and boys can wear skirts if they want, can't they? Don't be sexist, Kim. Um, Alright, so now I don't, I'll try and zoom in on this and point it out perhaps with my needle. These are those front loops. You can see it's just a little line that runs along here. Um, so you can pick the um, the loop up with your needle um, and it is a little bit trickier with the hook but like I said once you get the first one the other ones seem to to know that that's what we're doing there we go so what we're going to do is we're going to get back on there and we're just going to single crochet Try and get this one. Is that even one? I'm going to go back into this one. And we're going to single crochet three times into that one front loop. And the more you single crochet or the more you crochet into a stitch the like this the kind of um, the ruffler it gets so let me just try and find if that's I think that's actually my yeah that's actually the leftover end sticking out from the tail where I cut off from the body Get on there. There we go. Yeah, diabolical. So three single crochets in that one. And then we're going to try and coax the next one onto the hook. Three single crochets into that one. I hope you can see all this. Um, look, it is quite hard to see in the white but when you're actually doing it you should be able to see um, exactly where that stitch is. It might be a little bit hidden um, but yeah certainly it's right there. It's quite visible. Two and three. The next one is this one. If you find that you're really having difficulty getting in to the front loops that we've left, then just um, go to a smaller hook. Um, you can use like a really small hook at the moment. Um, I'm using, I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning, I'm using a four and a half mil, um, but you could, you know, go down to a two 
and that will enable you to get right in under there but you can do it with your hook so persevere because if you use a um, another hook to get under you're going to have to change every stitch to your actual crochet hook anyway um, to you know create the ruffle so you don't want that to be too small and I do apologize if you can hear my daughter in the background she's um, she's being very quiet um, she knows that I'm videoing but <laughs> Occasionally there'll be sighs, you know, she's a teenager, so... And it is like living with a ghost, isn't it? Because, you know, random doors slam and there's a lot of moaning and it is a lot like living with a ghost. Um, Alright, so we're halfway around this frill and it has taken no time really. It is, as I said, if you don't want to put it on, don't. But I think that it looks much better on than not. So we'll just keep going. Three single crochets under every one of those front loops. Now that you know what I'm doing, how about I'll just zoom out a bit. So under that loop. Uh oh. completely love this little guy I um, will recommend that once you have your frill done and it's time to do the embroidery make this face however you wish um, I really don't think that um, my embroidery skills are anywhere near even average um, so you know certainly I'd love actually to see other people's um, ghost faces because you know there's some people who are, have some astonishing artistic skills in that regard and I'm sure that they can make some delightful faces now where is that loop this one is frequently hard to find there it is You know, you're going along nicely, finding the loop quite easily, and then you get back here and you go, well, where is it? And then all I'm going to do is slip stitch to this first single crochet, if I can get into it. And slip stitch into that. Oh, you cutie. Okay, we don't need an enormous tail. Um, take out the working yarn. And he is finished. So all we need to do is darn in this end with this darning needle. And I just tend to um, go back through here into the body. And then just pick up a piece of this and just make a knot there. 
and then pass that um, cotton or the, the yarn back through into the body and cut it off and it won't move. Are you taller than? Yep. Tiny bit taller. I have no idea how that happened, but there you go. Oh, look, I haven't got eyebrows. I've got eyebrows. Um, wow, I'm going to have some fun playing with these. If you want to keep your ghost just eyes, that's okay too. If you want to put, um, I actually considered putting a little bit of tiny dot of blush, um, actual makeup blush just on the cheeks to make his cheeks a little bit red. Um, because this one looks quite happy. I was actually thinking of making this angry. So let's do that. Okay, so I've got my embroidery thread on my needle. I'm using a metal needle with a sharp point. It's a lot thinner than these plastic ones and I definitely would recommend that you use one of those. All I've done is I've gone directly through the back and come out my um, target hole in the front here because I'm hoping to give him some little cross eyebrows. Um, so this was my midpoint and I'm planning on going into this and potentially not this one because it's a bit close, but out the middle of that stitch there. So perhaps, perhaps I'll go into that one first. That might prove easier said than done. And then just pop back out that same hole. And hopefully we'll get in. And then I can go into this hole there and again pop out the same hole. And he looks a bit cross. So like I said, my um, embroidery is never going to be perfect um, because I am, as an embroiderer, I am a fantastic crocheter. <laughs> it isn't my forte, um, but it is nice to make sure that you've got some fine details on your amigurumi. So just giving, yeah, I do think that that needed to be a little bit longer, just giving him a... An eyebrow and potentially a straight mouth um, which I think maybe that needs to just be a little bit longer let's take it to there and then just pop out that hole isn't it a little bit longer and go back in there and do that again for the double thickness and then what I'll do is come put the nut the needle in to over here so I can get back into that position to do the other eyebrow and I'll do a couple of small stitches just here to finish that top of that eyebrow. Yeah. 
Does he look sufficiently angry, do you think? Not angry, maybe just a little bit miffed. Um, I think those eyebrows are fairly even, although this one does look a little bit thinner here. So I'm just going to go in there and thicken this bit up. Hopefully it lays exactly where I want it to. Oh, that's better. All right. So now with this, I'm still trying to decide whether or not I'm going to do a mouth. Um, what I'm going to do is come down into the mouth position. We don't want you knotting like that. See what I mean about my embroidery skills? They are spot on, aren't they? Alright, so maybe just a little straight mouth. What do you think? A straight mouth? Let's see how we go. He's just unimpressed. Maybe this one told a bad joke and this one just not into it. So once we've got, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that mouth. I don't really think it needs a lot of alteration. Um, so once we have that, I just tend to, and you know, if you're an embroiderer and you know better, then please let me know. But I just tend to do that, make a little knot there, and I'll just put another one in just to be safe. I'm going through across the same spot again and again, and just trying not to get that knotted up. And all I'm going to do is go in under this loop here. So I'll leave a loop before I pull it all the way through and pass the thread through and then that should create a little knot it enables me to put a little bit tight and then I'm just going to go one more time back into that mouth I'm going to come out his back and then I'm going to do something which is really bizarre but works really nicely is I'm going to squash him and pull on that tight and cut it off and then the end stays inside my ghost and isn't on the outside and that is our completed ghost so there we go they stand up and they talk to each other it looks like they're having an argument this one's pretty happy about it this one's not um, I do hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I'd love to see your ghosts. I'm not sure that there is any way that you can um, uh, post the pictures on YouTube. But, of course, if you're on any of the Facebook crochet groups that I'm on, um, I'd love to see them. And I will catch you next time. Please give the video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon setting the notifications to all so that you can stay up to date with all of the latest crochet uploads on this channel. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time.